Well, it's that time of the year again where we fill our faces and clog our arteries, buy Christmas gifts for those parents that we see twice a year. Except for me, I have to see one of my parents every single day, and it's not even the good one. And now, that financial guy with Keith and Jack Wilson, spreading a wealth of information. All right, welcome back to That Financial Guy podcast. I'm Jack Wilson. I am Keith Wilson. And today we have put together an end of year planning checklist. Isn't that fun? Isn't that super? It is super to do all this end of year <laughs> planning. But uh, a lot of people think about end of year planning as just, you know, planning for taxes and it's really more than that because we got a we've got a hard deadline coming up yeah. December 31st. And we didn't do an exhaustive list, but something that we want to bring to your attention that there are certain things you need to do before December 31st to take advantages of opportunities. Some yep. of it has to do with taxes. So, yep, we got a checklist. We're going to check it twice. We're going to see who's naughty and who's nice. Um, the first thing we got <laughs> on the, the checklist, so we want to gather documents up and get organized. Yeah, that's so number that's one. Good first, uh, first. You want to get it organized is- because you... You don't want to wait until tax time to say, okay, we're, i got to find all this. Whether, whether you keep stuff and documents, digital or in paper format receipts, but here's something interesting. Mm-hmm. The IRS, I read somewhere in a publication that since they changed the standard deduction to pretty much twice as much, 90% of people do the standard deduction and not itemize. Right. And I can, I can understand that. But for some, they still do. Gather your documents. Get it uh, in one place. Get organized. And not only, I mean, you do need, like you were saying, we do need some uh, to get some things done before the end of the year. You know, just gathering this stuff up now and, st- you know, the first of the year is coming up. And that's a big time for a lot of people to set new goals. Uh, yeah, they're thinking about know, other things during this time. But it's uh, like it's a, a big goal for people for the new years. It's like, all right, I want to get financially set, ready to go. But let's we'll let's start, start now. Yeah, let's start, start getting now. some things done now, and you will be on your way. On next your year. way. So uh, another thing on our list is uh, flexible savings accounts (FSAs), and the reason this is brought up because we've got a hard deadline on that. Yeah. If you don't use your FSA. You might you just might, lose it. You might just lose it. So it depends on your employer and how it's set up. So a flexible savings account, it's kind of like an H- HSA. They are not, they're kind of distant cousins to mm-hmm. one another, but they it's similar, but it's different. Anything that you contribute to an FSA must be used for qualified uh, medical expenses in order for it to be tax-free. So... Uh, a lot of these plans, the max you can contribute, by the way, is $2,850. And if you don't use it, it, the employer keeps it, not you. So that's why we've got a hard deadline of December 31st. Some plans will hey, say... There's some some employers have a grace period. They have a grace period. Of a, only a couple months, but the, the big phrase for FSA is use it or lose it. Use it or lose it. Like you, like you said, some have grace periods. Others will say, hey, well, we'll carry over $570 is the max. But the point is, don't forget about it. You don't use it, you lose it. Now, with HSA. With HSA, it's a little bit different because it does carry over. Um, but, yeah, what do, we, what do we have to do at the end of the year for an HSA? Well, you just want to make sure you're contributing to the max. It might be a good time to look at look investing. At, are, are you contributing to the max, which is $3,650 for an right. individual, $7,300 for a family? If you're over 55, then you can contribute uh, an additional $1,000. But you touched on it. Consider, yeah, so- consider looking into investing a portion of that HSA. I mean, the market's down right now. I mean, it's coming back up a little bit, but we it might be a good time to start looking at investing, uh, investing. while everything's on sale, basically. Correct. So the point of looking at your HSA, uh, are, are you maxing out that contribution? 
consider looking at the investment options. Get with your uh, financial institution and see what's. And another thing there. about uh, the difference with HSA and FSA is like you're you're actually the owner. Yeah. Of the account. So FSA, you're not. HSA, you are. So, yeah, you, it's not a use it or lose it uh, situation. And if you left that employer, you take it with you. So it's right. your, yours. So, again, to, to, to be eligible for tax-free going in, you got to use it for eligible medical expenses. So continuing on the same train, now we get into health insurance. Why yeah. is that important to look at this time of the year? And so open enrollment. It's open enrollment. You either. might want to... Yeah, check out your plan and kind of compare with other plans, see if you're still satisfied with what you got. Well, and a lot of times they'll send you the paperwork that says, okay, here's your current plan. Here's where we're changing. And a lot of people just glaze over and say, well, oh, the premium went up a little bit. That's no big deal. And, oh, my co is the same for my doctor. But maybe the deductible went up. You didn't look carefully enough. Maybe your co-insurance went up from whatever amount to another amount. So you want to really want to compare. Another consideration is, is your income going to be a little bit lower next year? Maybe you got laid off part-time or whatever. Think about you might qualify for a subsidy through the marketplace. So don't just glaze over that health insurance option. Look at that very carefully because there again, you got a deadline, hard mm -hmm. deadline of December 31st. Then we get into the investment side of things of what to look for what to do before the end yeah. of the year so we i mean we got tax loss harvesting uh that's a uh usually a big part of the end of the year um definitely for us if exactly because we as you said we're doing this a lot right now this is the time of the year to all right do we if we sold something for a gain then we got to look at something for a loss to offset it that's one idea you got to watch out for the wash sell rule, which is if you sold, let's say you did sell something for a loss because, okay, I like this security, mutual fund, whatever, um, but it's down. I'm going to go ahead and take a loss on it so I can write it off on my taxes, which you can only write off $3,000 in a year, but what's left over is carried over for years to come. And you say, I want to buy that right back. I'm going to sell it for a loss, capture that loss. Yeah, you got to be back. you got to be careful with what you're <clears throat> you're traded in, in for. So, good well, example is that traded in. You got a mutual fund traded in for an ETF, so it's not super similar. I mean, what we're trying to avoid is the wash sale rule, which says if you sell something and you immediately buy it right back, the same security or something substantially similar, you don't. You don't get that loss. Right. So just like you said, Jack, look at trading, you know, mutual fund for an ETF, something to consider. You need to get with your financial advisor to make sure it makes the most sense to you. But this is the time of the year we really look at that so we can capture some of these losses. But you got to be careful of the wash sell rule. And to go along with that is capital gains distribution. I should back up and say that tax loss harvesting. I is, think for non-retirement accounts. for non-retirement accounts. Not the butt in there, but yeah, capital gains distribution again for non-retirement non -retirement accounts. accounts. So any capital gain you would have if you sold something you, for a loss in an IRA, you can't write it off. Right. But non-retirement accounts, capital gains distribution is the other. That pertains to mutual funds. So again, in a non-retirement account, uh, let's say you don't sell a mutual fund, but it's down for the year, and you, maybe you just got it earlier in the year, and it's down just like everything else. You could have a capital gains distribution, meaning that money manager bought some stock 20 years ago yeah. that is highly appreciated, but still it's come down a little bit, but it's appreciated from the time they purchased it. They sell it. That gain is passed on to the investors. So that's a slap in the face because you're going to, you're down for the year. Don't, in XYZ don't mutual fund. Yeah, don't let it deceive you. Here's the key. They usually pay these capital gains distributions in December. So number one, and this again, non-retirement account, Check uh, with that mutual fund company and say, you can go online and it's right there. They post it. They, it's public and say, okay, here are the capital gains distributions that we anticipate for XYZ fund. And 
man, maybe one of them's got 20 or 30% right. distribution. Well, that means you're going to make 20 uh, or they're passing that gain to you. So uh, check it out. Number one, there is a deadline on that. It's called the record date. So if you hold that fund on their record date, then it's going to be passed on to you. So it kind of goes along with be careful of what you buy right now. Right. Right now, check out that capital gains distribution. So you check with your tax advisor again on this to see where you stand on taxes for that. Check with your financial advisor if you want to call us. Uh, we'll be happy to help you out looking into that. So retirement accounts. Now we want to talk about retirement accounts. Yeah, so uh, a big one, I think, on this list is your RMD. So your required minimum distribution um, for our, old, our older folks uh, over age 72, you got to take your RMD out as well as uh, beneficiary IRA uh, holder. So you got to take your RMD out on, on both of those. The, the big con to this is if you do not take it out by the end of the year, it's a 15 15- 50% uh, tax on that. Penalty, excise tax, whatever you want to call it. So that's why it's very important. You got that hard deadline of December yeah. 31st. If you're 72 or over, or like you said, a beneficiary IRA, you could be whatever, 20 years old. It doesn't matter. If you, in, if you inherited an IRA from a, a, a lost, mom and dad, yeah. or grandma, grandpa, whatever, each year you got to take an RMD out. So make sure that RMD has been taken out. So that kind of slides into what we call a QCD. Yeah, so this goes hand Q-C-D. in hand. QCD. I'm goes, getting a little punchy, sorry. It's all right, don't <laughs> touch me. <laughs> Qualified charitable A QCD goes with the RMD. Uh, so yeah, if you, if you just want to say, hey, I don't need the money, I do want to give it to charity, that's going to be take your. It will be taken out of your RMD. But the good thing about it is that it's not going to be. You don't uh, have to tax. pay the tax on you're it. You're getting the full amount to be sent to. Uh, I mean, your your charity has to uh, be qualified. Right. It's going to be a four or three C qualified charitable institution. But uh, the good point is there. A lot of people say, you know what? I don't need this RMD. I'm doing fine on the, my own, but the government, IRS, is making me take it out, you know, because they want the taxes on it. And you already give to charity, perhaps. Well, as long as you set it up properly, it's got to be set up properly, meaning it's got to go straight to that charitable uh, uh, institution. You can't just take it out, then write a check to the charity. It's got to be on a paper form you get with your financial advisor at financial institution they know how to do it, and it goes direct to the charity. And you pay nothing in taxes on your RMD, and uh, you've made a charitable donation to the charity of your choice. Make you again, feel good about yourself. Right. Check with your tax advisor again. Make sure it's done right. Check with your uh, financial advisor as well. The, so we already discussed the markets being low. Yeah. Um so now is also a good time to start thinking about Roth conversions. Roth conversions. Uh, take advantage of the market right now. And why, would you, why would you consider doing a Roth conversion when the markets are down? It's kind of easy. If you think the markets are going to go up, w- when you convert to a Roth IRA and it's coming out of your IRA or your 401k and we're converting that, meaning we're taking money out, we're putting in the Roth. There is no income limit for a Roth conversion. There is for a contribution. We're talking about a conversion. Take money out. Now you pay the taxes on that money. But now it's inside a Roth that has that potential for tax-free growth. I say potential because you got to follow the rules. you got to keep it five years. you got to be over 59 and a half before you take it out in, in order not to be taxed on earnings and avoid a penalty. But the idea is hey, we're starting in a tax-free account potentially, and the growth potential is higher because the markets are lower. So a lot of people are doing Roth conversions. There's no really deadline to do that, but if you want to count it for this tax year, while the account is down, get it done before December 31st. So not an exhaustive list, but things to consider. Everybody's different. Everybody's unique. 
Again, get with your tax advisor, get with your financial advisor. If you don't have one, there's two of us here. If you just have questions that you want to ask, want to bounce something off, give us a call. We've got our contact information below. But uh, enjoy yourself for the end of the year with the holidays coming up, family getting together. But do keep in mind the, this checklist of things to consider taking care of before the end of the year. And now we want to give something away for free. Did you know I was going to do this? No. Well, it's not coming out of your pocket. Folks, did you know that you could subscribe to this channel for free? It's, it doesn't cost anything. <laughs> you should definitely do that. I say that tongue-in-cheek. But, um, yeah, please, if you f have uh, found value in uh, this video or this podcast that you're listening to, please follow us on the podcast. Give us a thumbs up. Rate us. Uh, uh, subscribe to this channel, thumbs up, things like that. That Do all that good stuff. Do all that stuff. Uh, it does help the algorithm so we can continue to spread the wealth of information. Peace. Thank you for joining us on That Financial Guy. For more information, get in touch with Keith and Jack at WFA-NC.com. Remember to subscribe to the podcast to hear more information to help you pursue your financial goals. 